Okay. When will Mashiach come? Anybody know? Anyone have any idea? We've been speaking about the past six classes of Mashiach. Any predictions when Mashiach's coming? Soon. Soon is good. <laughs> Maximum. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Now. <coughs> Soon, now, 6,000. A lot of discrepancy in the class as to when Mashiach is expected. The answer is? We don't know. We don't know. But yeah, we have some. It's absolutely guaranteed for 6,000. That much we do know. That is a promise, which is the basis to all of Judaism. Having said that, Wait, so we do know when Mashiach cannot come. We know Mashiach. Mashiach means that if it doesn't come, then Judaism is a lie? Uh, right. That would oh, be the wow. premise to it. Right. <laughs> which it isn't. So Mashiach will come. <laughs> As I want to show you, we're getting very close. Okay. However, the two days, or various days, I should say, when Mashiach definitely will not come. And that is Shabbat or Yom Tov. Well, actually, we're going to see. Even Erev Shabbat and Erev Yom Tov. That is based upon the Gemara in the Ruvin on page 61. Let's learn this Gemara together. And basically, the Gemara is talking about someone making a, becoming a Nazir. A Nazir is something we don't have today, where a person will take upon themselves to not cut their hair, to not come into contact with a dead body, and to not drink wine, or anything which could become wine. Okay? So a person could turn around and say that they are a Nazir, and therefore the Nazirut would last a certain amount of time, a minimum of 30 days, I believe. But a person can even give stipulations. Why they would want to do this is not for now, it's a form of self-control and change, but a person could give stipulations. One of the stipulations a person could make, so basically going to visit Nazir just to get Nazir, just to get an idea of one of the stipulations. A person makes an oath, he makes a shavua, and says, I'll be a Nazir, a person forbidden to drink wine, on the days that the Ben David, Mashiach, is due to come. So why he would say that, we'll leave aside. But let's say a person makes such a declaration. He's allowed to drink wine, says the Gemara, on Shabbat and Yom Tov. Why is that, says the Gemara? And that person cannot drink wine or um, on a weekday. Why would he limit himself to that? And the answer is because Mashiach cannot come on Shabbat or Yom Tov. And therefore, his words mean nothing. Where do we get this from? It says, and this is a guarantee, right? The Pasuk says, Behold, I'm sending you Eliyahu the prophet on this great, on this very great and awesome day. Then says the Gemara, there's an ancient tradition among the Jewish people that not only on Shabbat Yom Tov, Mashiach cannot come, but even Erev Shabbat and Erev Yom Tov, Mashiach cannot come. Right? Why exactly is that so important? Why is the Gemara telling us this? So Shabbat and Yom Tov. Right? We have no Mashiach. Very famous Gemara. But even Erev Shabbat and Yom Tov. There is no Mashiach. Why not? Says the Gemara because we're busy. We're getting ready for Shabbat. We're getting ready for Pesach. Ready for Sukkot. On Pesach, obviously, we're like crazy busy. Right? We've got the mitzvot. We have the Sedarim. We have the Holomoid trips with our kids. We've got a lot going on. Right? We've got to go to, you know, Six Flags. I don't know. We're busy. Therefore, we can't do it. So Hashem does not want to be matriach. Hashem doesn't want to be matriach us to bother us by coming on these days. <coughs> Based upon this, there's a joke which is told in the yeshivas. It's a yeshiva joke. You're not going to burst out laughing. But they say, but let's say he does come on Shabbat or on Erev Yom Kippur or Erev Rosh Hashanah or on Sukkot or Erev Sukkot. Then what? And they say, okay. Oh, then we'll have a question. We'll have a question on him. Let him come anyway. Kind of uh, yeshiva humor that we have to endure for the many years we study in yeshivat. However, the basic shot is he will not come on those days. Hashem would not bring meaning that when he comes, there's going to be. This is one of the implications you can make from this. 
a lot of commotion, a lot of turmoil. It's not like you're, you know, someone's just turning up and we're like, fine, I'll see you Matzah Shabbat, I'll see you Matzah Yom Kippur, I'll see you. It's not like that. When Mashiach comes, everyone's going to know about it. It's going to be very, very apparent. And everyone's going to go and get involved and go greet him. Be a lot of commotion. That's what it means. Otherwise, let him come and I'll see him, uh, you know. I'm glad he's here. We'll talk. No, 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 no. When he comes, it's going to be a major happening that is going to disrupt everything. That is going to disrupt everything all the time. It's going to have a major, major implication. Says the Chovetz Chaim, and this is a very famous, I wouldn't say play on words, Peshat in the Navi we just read. The Chovetz Chaim says, Gam Ketiv, Hinei Anochi Sholech Lachem Et Elu Anavi. I am going to Sholeach. What does Sholeach mean? So it's tricky. It's a little tricky. The Kasher Nidai Hetev says the Mishnah Bura. If you are careful to be medayek, that means to analyze well, nearer, you'll see the locative Lashon Ashaleach. It doesn't say Ashaleach, which will be I will send. Okay, now remember, these are the words of Malachi. Malachi, the last of the prophets, we're going to visit him again. He has some very interesting prophecies for us later on. But he's the last prophet, so assuming what he has to say is important. Says the Prophet Malachi, Ani sholech lechem et Yalanavi, lefnei yom Hashem. I'm going to send you Eliyahu Navi before the very day. It doesn't say asholech, I'm going to send. It means sholech, I will send, or I'm sending. It's not in the future tense. This is an event that's going to happen in the future. There will be a sending, right? It's not, it's not I will send, right? It's sholech, he says the Chavis Chaim, with a cholam, with a dot. Above the vav, sholech. So it's not, I will send, it's, I send. What are the implications? What is the difference in Lashon that the Chavetz Chaim is taking in the words of Malachi, Malachi the prophet? Meaning, I send means it's not a future event. It's a present event wherever you are in the future. Say that again. He's not saying at some future time, I'm going to send you, Mishnah, it's going to be fantastic. He's like, I send. If you're ready, he comes. If not, then you're gonna have to wait. It's in your hands. Yecholani l'shlochoto. I am able to send him lachem to you. V'chol eight at any time, or v'chol zman at any time. Rak im tizkulazer. If you merit it. So now we see another dynamic. The coming of Mashiach is dependent upon us. This was not true for the redemptions of the other Galiot, right? The time came for the end of the Galut. A time was assigned. It was completed. We're out. When it comes to Mashiach, however, it's not like that. When it comes to Mashiach, the final day, it can happen at any given moment that is in between Sholeach, I send to Ani Sholeach, I will send. Having said that, Having said that, there is, as we said, an outside time and an inside time. Remember that? The Be'ito and Achishana, the 6,000 and any moment. Do you remember that? Please have that down. That was from Isaiah the prophet. The Be'ito in its time, referring to 6,000 years, or Achishana, I can bring it closer. So we have different times. So one time is a given 6,000. However, there is a, through our efforts, as the prophet says, we didn't do that. We didn't do no. Be'ito Achishana yet? Wow, I apologize. I'm ashamed. I shall flagellate myself right after class <laughs> with this banana skin. Okay. The prophet Isaiah. Sorry, I didn't do that yet. I guess it's coming. The prophet Isaiah says there's two. We did discuss it without these words. There's two possible times that Mashiach can come. He says, and he puts this in one of the verses, and he says, "Beito." In its time, or Achishena. Beito means in its time. This is a reference. This is a reference to the six thousand years, right? There's a definite time that Mashiach can come, and there's a maximum time that we're going to call the outside time. 
That's the outside time the Mashiach can come. 6,000, that's the Be'ito in its time. Be'ito in its time. However, there's another version, we've discussed this, and that's the Achishana. And that is the <coughs> inside time. And if we do the right thing at the right time, and we'll see what those things are, the certain specific mitzvot, which are going to hasten the redemption, as we shall see. Certain mitzvot that we need to focus on specifically in order to bring Mashiach. That is the pulled inside time, meaning that we have the ability through our actions, we merit it, to bring Mashiach at any time. So as the Prophet says, he's going to come be'ito in his time, or if you're able to bring him forward. He's coming for sure. question is inside or outside time. That's what we're discussing. Okay? Now, there's another part of this as we're going to see, and that is, we know, we're going to see, that there are two possible ways Mashiach can come. Miraculous, non-miraculous. Miraculous, non-miraculous. They are both defined differently. One we saw last <coughs> class of the shooting star through the sky. Miraculous, right? Base of Milch is built miraculously from fire from heaven, right? Comes from Shemayim. Or the, there's another one which is Mashiach's going to come riding on a donkey, on a chamor. Well, which one is it? It's either this amazing, miraculous event, or he comes on a donkey. So the commentators say that's actually two versions of the same thing. Miraculous or non-miraculous? You see it's Mitzrayim, miraculous. Purim, non-miraculous. So we have the star, the kochav, in the Shemayim. That is the miraculous version. And that's the Achishena. And that's the Achishena. That's the miraculous version that we merit, and if you merit it, it's more amazing. And that's the preferred option. It's earlier, and it has greater impact on the world. The other version is the Be'ito version, and that's the Chamor version, the donkey version. He'll come, right, a donkey, Chamor is, uh, is also, Chamor is also the word for Chumriyot, for physicality. It's gonna be a natural, physical, not a miraculous version, and that's the, be, that's the Be'ito in its time, and that's that version. So we have two possible ways it can come. Until they happen, we don't know which one's going to happen. But of the two, we want the Achishena version, which is going to be pulled in earlier. Okay? So that's actually very important background information. Okay? So that's what the Chavis Chaim means when he's defining the words of Malachi, Malachi, that Sholeach, he has the ability, not I will send, but any given moment could be ready, except Shabbat and Yom Tov, because that would disrupt too much uh, of our lives. Shana Shriki. Is there something about it being like a secret donkey? <coughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is true. This donkey goes right back to the creation. Same donkey, Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah, and Avon Avinu. Right, 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 right. That's not for now, but that's uh, very true. That's actually my book. Yes? So even if they don't match, Mashiach can come, he's still going to come. Yes. Yes. Now, you can come two ways, miraculously or non-miraculously, mm -hmm. with pain and difficulty, or nice and easy. It's our actions that define that redemption. Like most things in life, right? I mean, life's like that, isn't it? Things are going to happen. They have to happen. You've got to have to set final to my exam, to my, my course, right? You can go the easy route by studying, working hard. You go the hard route by not studying and turning into a, you know, pile of bones right before the final, okay? Some things are givens. Taxes. Death. Okay? There are givens. It's our decision how we prepare ourselves for those moments. Right? Mashiach is the ultimate version of that. Okay? However, it's a collective reality. It's a collective reality. All right? Having said all this, and this was very, very important, is it possible to calculate the actual time Mashiach is going to come? I don't mean the Be'ito time, I mean the Achishena time. Is that possible? So we'll see from the following source something extraordinary that it's forbidden to attempt to calculate the end of days. And the Gemara speaks harshly about people who attempt to do it. Says the Gemara, Amr of Shumul Bar Nachmeni, page 62. Amr of Yochanan, Tirpach Atzman Shel Nachshavei Kitzin. May the bones of the people who try and attempt to calculate the end time of Mashiach may they rot. May the bones of those people attempt to calculate the end of days, 
may they rot. Strange statement. First of all, what can we learn <coughs> from this? Maybe it is actually possible to calculate the end times. It was revealed to people. Yaakov knew. Probably all the others knew. Daniel the prophet knew. So, assuming this knowledge is able to be revealed, it could be a person calculated. And there are those that say, through astrological means, or through certain calculations, using the Torah, because everything's in the Torah anyway, people are able to figure out roughly, or even precisely, when Mashiach could come. But what's the problem with that? What's the problem with attempting to calculate the end of days? So one problem, one problem if you look at the Gemara, one problem would be, I'm not going to get ready, right? I'll do nothing at all. And one day before, I'll become a tzaddik, I'll do tshuva, right? I'll start to behave myself. And then everything will work out fine for me. And obviously Hashem does not want us to do that. He wants us to prepare over time, not last minute, night before the examination, cramming. Okay. What's another danger Shana. If you miscalculate, because if you can calculate, you can miscalculate, right? Life's full of miscalculations. We're only human. Let's say you throw your money down, like you see these like certain Christian scholars try to do that, you know? Right? They'll say, "Oh, that's the end over there. That's the date." And they say, "What's going to happen?" Maybe you miscalculated, or maybe you calculated well, but I should have decided that that wasn't the given time. It's something else, epic should happen at that time, and we're going to push it off a little bit more. The Jews need more time to cook in galut before they are ripe to be plucked from the tree of exile. Sounds good, that. I just made that up. I feel good. Right? It's too early. So it could be the calculation was good. But what's going to happen? We're going to get to that point where we're like, oh my God, here he is again with his calculations. Right? And uh, he messed it up. And we're going to lose hope. Oh, here he comes again. Right? Rabbi Cohen... Right, with his usual calculations of the end of days, and we're going to lose faith. Although maybe the calculation was a good calculation, but Hashem, for some reason, overrode it and decided that this wasn't, this was a potential time. There are various potential tukufas that have more power and could lead to Mashiach coming. Certain events in history, maybe that led to it, says the Gemara, no. No, don't try to do it. And again, according to some people, because you could actually be spot on. And what's weird is this is the Gemara, and everyone seems to agree with it, and even the Rambam agrees with it, and even the Rambam in Igeret Temani wrote letters to the Jews of Yemen who were having a lot of trouble with false messiahs, and he says, don't calculate at the end. By the way, I have a Masora tradition <coughs> passed on my family, and I think, and he gives a certain, certain time range for Shekha come. It's pretty wild. And obviously, he was off. Yudha Chassid has a version. There's a lot of commotion about it. It's a very dangerous game to play. Right? Many times in history, if you look at medieval times, when times are hard for Jewish people, <coughs> people come out, the Messiah will come and redeem us, and the time comes and passes if they choose a certain specific time, rather than saying, we hope today will be the day, we pray today will be the day, we love Hashem and we hope He'll bring it today. But to say that's the time, dangerous game to play, and many Jews have been lost spiritually and physically. They've sold their houses. Sounds crazy. There's many such stories through history of false messiahs, and they sold their houses, and they've moved, and they've uprooted their lives, and it wasn't the right time in the right way. And so they just gave away all the possessions. Don't do it. Okay? But there have been many, it sounds crazy, there's many occasions read about medieval times of Jewish people, people actually did that and thought they'd be saved in the last moment. Says the Rambam, Leolam, never, don't involve yourself too much with the Agadot, with the stories and calculations regarding Mashiach. And don't make this your Ikka Avoda. Don't get involved and make it your day in and day out. That's what I'm going to do, which is pretty much, you know, what one religion does. There's a religion out there which basically faces, creates an entire religion about this one concept, all right, of Mashiach coming. 
He says that's not the way to be. We don't do this. It's an area of study, and it's important, but it can't become your ikar avodar, says the Rambam. Right? The law is simam ikar. She'en v'vin lo ledeira. It's not going to help you. It's not going to bring you to fear God. It's going to become your obsession, an unhealthy obsession. The law le ahava. And it won't bring you to love Hashem either. Because you're going to be waiting and anticipating and looking for signs. He says that's not the way to be. Now, unfortunately, we've bent the tree the complete other way and we've neglected this area of Jewish thought completely. We don't even talk about it. Oh, that's right. Mashiach, that's a Chabad thing. But it's not, right? It's not just a Lubavitch concept. Right? This is something which is very ikar. So actually, Lubavitch did us a favor, I believe, by bringing it back into conversation, right? Making us actually discuss it and talk and learn about it. V'chein lo yichashev Don't try to calculate the end, he says. Don't overdo it, don't overstudy it, and don't try to calculate the end. Ella yichakeh, wait, v'yamin, and believe. The klal davar, and the general principle, k'mosh v'yarnu, as we pointed out, he says, in his yud gimel ikremuna, v'yafal pi shit mamea, im kozeh, achake loy. That's the Rambam, yeah. In the ikremuna. We looked at it right at the beginning when we started Mashiach. When he said that comes from, we'll see, actually comes from, um, what do you see right now? Watch this. Aval. Says the Ga'on, Nimrav Sari Ga'on. Aval, Adavar Ashe Namin, Shehu Sham, Shafa Bezmanim. Achad Mem's Manteshuva, we have two times. We have two times. Okay, now we're going to blow this up. Let's blow this up. We have two possible times the Mashiach can come. Okay, now we have it. He's going to call it something else. Now, Sadi is going to call it something else. <coughs> the first version he's going to call is Zman Teshuva. Okay? Zman Teshuva and Zman Akates. Which one's Zman Teshuva? Which one's Zman Akates? What do you think? One of these two times, he's got different names for these two things, the Vita and Shana. He's saying one is Zman Teshuva, one is Zman Akates. Yes, Ms. Blanchet. Kates is Gito, that's correct. Kates is Beito, that's the Zman of Kates, says Rav Sadegon. And the Zman had Teshuva, is over here, right? Because through Teshuva, as we'll see, we're able to bring him earlier, and that's the more miraculous one. So that's how Rav Sadegon refers to these two, the base Zmanim, the two times the Mashiach can come. Okay? Achad mehem Zman Teshuva, achad mehem Zman of Kates. The Eze behem Shiyagdim Tetachev Bagulullah. And whichever these comes first, that's the redemption, right? It could be that this one comes first, and that's the redemption, right? The Achishana. Or it could be the Be'ito comes first, and it's 6,000, and that becomes the redemption, right? There are those, by the way, who say that it's not definitely the 6,000th. Even the Be'ito could be a time inside the 6,000th. There are those that say that. But the Ramban, which we're gonna go with, he seems to go with 6,000, Going to the Beito, so on a Peshat level, we'll just go with that for simplicity, but even that could be an in and out of time that depends upon us. Okay, by the way, <coughs> we have proof of this in Jewish history, right? Mitzrayim. When did the Jewish people leave Mitzrayim? Was that the time? What does the Haggadah say about leaving Mitzrayim? That had we not left in the Jewish year 2448, what would have happened? We would never have gone out. So Hashem even somehow had to early that redemption because a year later we were completely assimilated and be lost. So Hashem does us favors in order just to keep history going. Yeah? So that's Rav Sadi Ga'on. The Ibahem Shagdim Tetchev Valgula the Im Tishlem Teshuvatenu and Mavatin Lalakates. If we do complete Teshuva, then the fixed time, Zmalakates, will be disregarded. So it's one or the other. It ain't both. It ain't both. One or the other is going to win over, and when it happens, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. And by the way, don't think about it. Don't, remember, don't forget the Jews of Mitzrayim and Egypt had the same thing. How are we get redeemed? It's going on and on and on. It was 50 years and 100 years, 150 years and 200 years. And they had this tradition that the Redeemer is going to come. He's going to have special code words. What were the code words? What were the code words? that Moshe Rabbeinu had to give in order to prove that he was the one? Pokod Yifkod. I will surely remember. Pokod Yifkod were the code words for the redemption. OK? 
Okay, that's the letter Pei. You see the various galuts each have their own letter that represents the end. We'll talk about the Mashiach, the Messianic code we'll get to, yeah. I always said that Kate means the bet. No, Kate means the end. Kate means the end, that's what the Kate means. <laughs> Right, Machshvei Kates, those people who try to figure out the end time. Kates, right? Kitsoni is an extremist. It's because he's always on the end, right? Can I go back for it? Sure. What's, when did this concept of Mashiach start? Because like at the time of Shlomo, it's like Mashiach came. Like no, no one was allowed to like convert. Like everybody was. No, Mashiach did not come. There's always a potential Mashiach. This goes back. We've pointed from the beginning of creation. Hashem set up this world with Olam Haba as part of it. The beginning of the Olam, pro- Olam Haba process. Is Mashiach coming? Therefore, before the world even started, it was set up this way. How it plays out is up to us. There's going to be a final, right? In the exam, final exam. We're all going to, that's a given. That's how the course begins. The Sof Ma'aser the end of all action, beginning of all thought. How we get to that point, the struggles, the difficulties, the midterms, the challenges. How we get there is up to us. That is dependent upon our actions. That's a Hishana. But there's definitely a case. That's definitely going to happen. It goes right back. We see Bill spoke about it. We see Yaakov spoke about it to his children. It's being passed down. This is a secret code that has been passed down right through Jewish history. But why didn't it didn't end in, in Palestine? Like everybody, all the Jews except the Torah. Great, great question. That's a very, very fair question. Maybe it would have. Had they not sinned with the Chet Egel, Mashiach would have come via Moshe Rabbeinu, would have been the Mashiach, would have gone to Eretz Yisrael, and the whole thing would have finished. <coughs> why it didn't happen? One day I will ask Hashem when I meet him. I'm not in any hurry, but that'll be a good question. It could have happened. At any point it could have happened. Shama Melech could have been Mashiach. The world wasn't ready. It's not about one person. It's about the collective. We're all involved in it. And obviously not every Neshama was at the point they could have received it. But to be fair, I guess the closest point we were at was at Har Sinai. I guess if you point at any point that Mashiach could have come and redeemed, that would have been it. A Mashiach, I mean, Mashiach was a, a Mashiach as it were. There was no need for Mashiach, we're not going to get everything. No, there was still the hate of Adam and Rishon. Still fixing up the main sin of, 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 uh, of Gan Eden. So there was always an impurity and always a fix that needed to be done. It just took much longer. Such longer. It's in, the whole thing I want to get into, uh, into our heads is that it's, a, this is what the it's upon us. We have the keys in our hands. This is what Chazal keep telling us. You don't just sit and wait, right? Waiting for the final is not going to help you. You've got to study, you've got to do stuff to prepare yourself for that moment. Okay, and you're able to, our activities are able to change it. The nature it even happens in. We're seeing the nature of the redemption is different as well. Right, is it a donkey version? Or is it a kochav in Shemayim, a star in the heavens? It's up to us. Yeah, but no one's perfect. There are usually not many. Very, very good. Perfect. We're gonna to come to that. That perfect thing is relative. It could be, actually not could be, it is the follow-up. Rav we're gonna do this actually next class. We're going to see that the rabbis say at the end of days it's going to be so difficult to be a spiritual Jew or to do good acts because people laugh at you, right? You're religious, you're crazy, right? That a small act of ours in 2017 is worth years of activities, two, three, four, five hundred years, definitely a thousand years ago. It's not a quantity, it's a quality. It's not a level of, of knowledge, it's where you are in history, which is one of the reasons we see that we'll see when the predictions, the Mishnah, in Sota, as a Mishnah, it's going to talk about how difficult it's going to be at the end of days so that our actions are worth a lot more. Meaning, very simply, as we'll see, studying one hour of Torah today is worth like a year, from, like 100 years ago. Because right? that's what we did. Then there were distractions. You know what I'm saying? We just sat, they studied, and we did. My parents were, my grandparents were from. Everyone's religious. We sit, we study, and that's the end of it. But today, like, just getting 10 minutes out of people is like a uh, miracle. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's, a, it's a fair point. If they didn't merit it, have we merit it? And the answer is because we're living today and they were living then. Does you can... evil inclination today? Absolutely. Oh, come on. Yeah. Jordan, this is like... First of all, everyone's ignorant. Right? No one knows anything about Judaism among the Jewish people, unfortunately. Right? No one cares. If you say you're religious, people think you're nuts. You've got to say you're spiritual or you know, you're know you finished. The conversation doesn't even get going. Right? I'm religious, forget that. I have a class on religion. Right? No one comes to that. Class of spirituality. Right? Oh, spirituality. That they have a time. Oh, spirituality. You know? 
that, but this is not me talking. This is Rav Dessler is going to talk about this. He's going to talk about this. And it's going to help us. It's going to help us. Otherwise, we're all in big trouble. Okay. Let's have a look at this inside. Says the Orachim, this is based upon by Midbar, Book of Numbers, 2417. <coughs> I, I shall see him, but not now. I shall look at him, but he's not near. Derech Kochav. He is like a star, Miyakov from Jacob, the Kam Shevi Yisrael, and a scepter bearer, right, a royal scepter bearer, has risen from Yisrael. So Orachim jumps onto these verses and be like, what is he talking about? So you read that, I think it's like talking about some kind, of, some kind of poetry or something. He says, no. There is a double expression, right? The Kofa Le'inyan, the Shino Eloshin. There's a double of the idea, and there's a repeating of the language. I shall see him, I shall look at him. Right? Arenu, Asherenu. Right? What says double Lashon is the question of the Orachayim. And he says, that's there to explain to us something very special about the coming of Mashiach. Yisba'er of Yitzvrahim, this helps us understand the language of the rabbis in Gemara Sanhedrin, 98b, where all the chapters and discussion of Mashiach are written. She'im tiyagu'ula ba'amtsu'ot z'chut Yisrael. But if the coming of Mashiach happens in the merit of the Jewish people. Yadavar mufla mamale. It's going to be an unbelievable event. If we earn it, it's going to be amazing. Right? If you earn the gift, the gift is amazing, and you appreciate it a lot more. Be it gala hagol Yisrael min shemayim, and the Redeemer is going to be redeemed. It's going to be revealed to the Jewish people min Hashem from heaven. But mofet with signs, the oat. But most of it with wonders, votes, and signs, Kamor Vasei Vazor, and he quotes the Zohar, who talks about this. So if you merit it, and the Tshuva Mali Zion, it's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be miraculous. It's going to be up there with Chris Yamsuf, give the Torah HaSinai. Amazing. Masha'in Kain, however, Kishitia Gu'ula Mitzada Kates, but if it follows the Kates version, the Ein Yisrael Ruim Lehla, and the Jewish people are not worthy of it, Tzieh Ba'ofan Acher, it's going to be a different version. That's why Zachary the prophet, right? Zachariah says in chapter 9, verse 9, he's going to be a poor person. A poor person riding on a donkey is what Zachariah the prophet in chapter 9, verse 9 tells us. Well, which one is it? Is it amazing wonders? Kochav, it's donkey? That's up to us. So that, he says, is actually the double Lashon. Arenu, Ashurenu. I see it, I look at it. Okay, I see him, I look at him. Okay, but it's not near. Velo Karov, it's not near. So these are the two versions of Mashiach. He, he encodes those words, right, to be actually revelations of Mashiach, which is actually in the Torah itself, right, before the Jewish people even, even entered into Eretz Yisrael. Yes? Um, which word corresponds to which? Like how you That's a good question. Which? That's a good question. I should know the answer to that question, but I don't. What do you think? Something, if you're like seeing it, like you're not interacting. So you want to say, I see it, but I'm not obviously saying, I'm involved with it. No, by seeing something, you're involved with it, but if you're just looking ah. at something, I'm just looking at it. So, which one is aha? Uh -huh. So, you're saying that Arenu is the vision that a person sees, and it's a much greater vision, is that what you want to say? Yeah, and that would be the miraculous one. That would be the miraculous one. That's the actually, that that good? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know. Good question. Okay, turn over the page. And this is quite astonishing, but now this Gemara will make absolute sense to you if you've been the class so far. Page 64. The of Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Ain bein David ba, the son of David, Mashiach, is not going to come. Ela bedor, shekula zachai, or kula chayav. Except in duration that it's all good or all bad. Either a generation is going to be like a really bad low generation, or like, oh, spiritual greats. And that's a very unusual Gemara. Right? Nothing in between? No, 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 no. It's going to be an extremist generation. Either we're all doing amazingly, Shlomo HaMelech time-like, or we're doing terribly, right? Kim Minasha time-like, re really good or really bad. It's like, wow. Does it have to be so extreme? 
And the answer is, well, possibly, it's going to have to end up on one of these two. Maybe in order to get this, the Achishana, you've got to be like really good. And maybe to get this, you've got to be really bad. Or flip it. Right? You're so bad that Hashem's going to bring it now or we're going to melt away and assimilate and intermarry out of existence. Or you're so good that Hashem wants to keep bringing merit and brings it that way. So you don't know which one. You can flip it both. You can see it both. Can you see that? You can see it both ways. We're like, wow. Jews are doing so badly, like in Mitzrayim, right? We were about to assimilate. So Hashem's like, I think about it right now. And Hashem himself had to come in and redeem us. Aniva lo malach. Aniva lo saraf, that God tells us. Hashem himself came to come in and pluck us out. Says the Arizal, that had Hashem let an angel come into Mitzrayim, he would have been negatively affected by it. It was so bad there, the Tumah, the impurity was so strong in Mitzrayim that we wouldn't have lasted another year. So Hashem had to pull us out for our time. And not everyone came with. Chamushim Yalu, only 20% left. So maybe that's where it's like so bad it's got to bring us out early. Or so bad we're going to have to wait to the end. You can flip it and see good or bad both ways. What's interesting is going to be completely bad. What's up with that? That's worth looking at. And we're going to look at Rav Desla. He's going to prove to us that that's what it's going to have to be. Yeah? I can see the donkey one happening both ways, but I can't see the, the really good, impressive one happening. You're saying basically if we're like really, really bad, why does it make it so miraculous? Yeah. I have. I'm saying, like you said, that's something we have to earn, right? Right, so right, 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 right. But then again, in Miss Ryan, we didn't really merit it. I should do us a favor, and it was miraculous. So, there are rules, and there's this exception to rules. Yeah, but that wasn't for the given before. As much. We still had certain, we knew what we had to do. We had certain mitzvah. We had certain mitzvah. We knew what we had to do. Right? Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, 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 that's like, interesting. To, like, prove back there. That's why Moshe gave the Simon and had to go back and get the Simon. Right, it's it was like it. so bad. Have to pick us up in order to make a display. Right, don't look at them, they're not doing the job. I'll show you what this is really meant to be about. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'm liking that. I would have put them in my book. You should have told me like two months ago. Let us meet somebody who met Mashiach. Anybody here met Mashiach? Maybe. That's the answer. Maybe I did. Maybe that guy who was, I don't know, begging for charity outside, maybe he's Mashiach. Maybe the woman who gave me my kosher sandwich, right, in the store night, maybe... Maybe the bus driver who took me in this morning, it's me, Lovely guy. You know what? He's such a nice guy. he get the job. He'll get me there quickly because he's a machine going to drive. I'll tell you that right now. Right? He'll get you there on time. Yes, yeah. Possible? Am I talking nonsense? Is it you? I doubt it. <laughs> They're going to have to pull the plug a little bit. But seriously, how do we know? Maybe we did. I mean, there's a potential machine alive at any given moment. He's going to be a great person, very, very learned, we assume. It happened. Let's look at this amazing Gemara. This is mind blowing. There's a story that Rabbi Yeshua saw Elia Navi and said to him, um, I got a question. You know what's happening in the spiritual world. You're part of it. When's Mashiach going to come? Amalei. Amas Ati Mashiach. When is he going to come? Amalei. Zil. Go. Shalidi, Lididi, go ask him yourself. Imagine that. He got up to Eliyahu Navi, he had this revelation, and he, he said to him, oh, Where's Mashiach coming? He's like, Don't ask me, go ask him. What would you respond to that? Where's he at? He's like, What he says. Beheicha Yativ, where's he sitting? Well, where is he? A pitra de Rome, he's sitting at the gates of Rome. He says, You're the grapes of Rome. Umai Simana, and how am I going to? A lot of people hanging around the gates of Rome. Right? How am I going to recognize him? Yativ Bey Ani Sovle Chalayim. He's sitting among the poor people, the ones who are sick with leprosy. And 
and all of the others there are unwinding their bandages and at the same time they're covering their sores with clean bandages. When you find someone, particularly among the poor people, and this someone is at the gates of Rome, and he, he and the people are taking off dirty bandages from sick people, putting on clean bandages, and taking off dirty bandages, and putting on clean bandages, he found him. So what does he do? Yalla, let's go find him. So off he goes. She sees him, right? And he sees he's taking his bandages on and off. And he's, he's saying to himself, Maybe it's my time to come, and I don't want to delay. So he's taking his bandages off one at a time. Even taking the bandages as one at a time, not to leave things exposed, one on, one off, one off, because every moment's precious. Azalagabe, who Yeshua went to Mashiach, and says, Shalom Alecha, Rabbi Amori. He says, Peace be upon you, my master, my teacher. Amale, Shalom Alecha, Balavoy. Peace be upon you, son of Levi. Mashiach greeted him back. Amale, le emas atimar. When is the master going to come? Amale, hayom. Today. I'm coming today. Atalagabaleo, Rabbi Yeshua, jumps up and he rushes back to Eliyahu Navi, who then said to him, my Malach, what did he say to you? Amala, he said to him, he said, to Eliyahu Navi, this is what Mashiach said to me, Shalom Alecha Bar Levi, peace be upon you, son of Levi, Amalei, Abtachalacha, Lavucha Leal Madati. By saying that to you, he guaranteed you and your father will have a place in Olam Haba. That's what that word meant. Mashiach says, Shalom to you, son of Levi, it means you and your father. That's why we refer to you by your father's name. And so Rashi says, since he gave you a blessing of peace, a peace and mentioned your Abba, your father, as well. So Rabbi Shua said, Shakuri ka shakarbi. Mashiach lied to me. Mashiach's a liar. It's a pretty big statement to make, right? About Mashiach to Eliyahu The Amali hayom itina. He said today he's going to come. Velo ate didn't come. Amalei hachia malacha hayom the today, the Hayom that he mentioned, is not today, it's the day. It's the day. What's the day? That's the day that David HaMelech told us in Tehillim, that's his great, 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 great grandfather, so he'd know, his ancestor, Hayom in Bukolo Tishmo. Today, the day that you follow Hashem's voice. The day that you follow Hashem's voice, when you listen to Hashem, when you do the right thing, I'm going to come. So he wasn't lying. He, the Hayom that he gave to Yeshua was actually the Hayom that David Melech told him about. The Hayom means I'm going to come on the day that you do the right thing. Okay? That's what happened. So what is that thing? What seems to be the, the missing piece over here that we are looking for? Okay? So let's go through some of the important mitzvot that are going to bring Mashiach. Okay? Well, let's start with the most famous one, and that is Shabbat. Shabbat is going to be a very important feature in order to be Mashiach. There are certain portals that we have that merit the coming of Mashiach. Certain portals. Shabbat is number one. As the Gemara says, just one Shabbos, and we'll all be free. I think someone sang about that once. Actually, the Gemara says two Shabbatot, actually. Two Shabbatot, Midrash says one. Meaning that Shabbat is me'en olam haba. You see, when you enter into Shabbat, there's a longer discussion about Shabbat and the nature of it, but Shabbat is the access point into olam haba. It's me'en olam haba. Therefore, you do Shabbat, you get a piece of olam haba in this world. Now, there's many, many other reasons why. Shabbat transfers you out of this world into the next world. Shabbat is also 
This is just a summary. We'll do this next semester in my Shabbat class. But Shabbat is also the root of Teshuva, repentance. You do Shabbat, you do Teshuva. Shabbat in itself is a form of repentance. And therefore, we know if we repent, Mashiach comes, Achishana has Teshuva. Oh, Teshuva Shabbat. There's no greater Teshuva than keeping Shabbat the proper way. So that's one opinion. And the opinion that says two Shabbats means the first one is just like a fluke, but if everyone keeps Shabbat. Now, what is the possibility of everyone keeping Shabbat? So some say it's a theoretical model, it's not possible, but through the merit of Shabbat. And some say, no, you actually need everyone to keep Shabbat. And some say it means the people who already keep Shabbat need to keep Shabbat properly. Right? We're talking, about the, we're talking to the Shomer Shabbat over here. The ones who are meant to and know about Shabbat, they're going to get more out of it. Whichever one it is, Shabbat is going to be a very quick, easy, and painless way to merit Mashiach. If Mashiach's not here, we're not doing the Shabbat thing right. We're not doing what we're doing. We're not maximizing the potential. But the connection with Shabbat and Gula and redemption is very, very, very clear. Okay. Shabbat is the greatest tool we have to bring Mashiach. Says the Sfas MS, this is based upon many other writings. Well, we can learn now the best way, what mitzvah is the best way to bring Mashiach? Well, we know the Mashiach comes, the temple is going to be rebuilt. We said it's one of the proofs that he is Mashiach. So, one second. Why do we have a temple? Because the temple was destroyed. What destroyed the temple? Sinat Chinam. So, if Sinat Chinam destroyed the temple, the opposite of Sinat Chinam is going to rebuild the temple, which means bring Mashiach. What's the opposite of Sinat Chinam? Avat Chinam is not a Jewish concept. That's not a real idea, not written anywhere. Free love, that's 1960s, right? Not anymore. It's Avat Yisrael. <laughs> Maybe being a little bit more pedantic, but Avat Yisrael, that's what he says. Avat Yisrael, yet Nivna. Bez what Hashem Barachi says. If one destroys, the opposite builds. It's a kalvachon. It just basically learn out. It's, a, it's just a logical conclusion from what we're saying. It says the Chassam Sofa on Pesach Agada. So remember, Pesach comes up because Pesach is the first main redemption and Mashiach is the second redemption. God bless you. Shema Tomar, a person may say, Maruchni v'yasiyah Mitzrayim v'anachno v'gola. What do we gain by being freed from Mitzrayim and we're back in exile? Why does Hashem take us out and we're back in? Avash Shabbat Galat Mitzrayim. Tell you why. Because when it comes to Galat Mitzrayim, Loi Cholano Ledaleg, Ala Kates, we couldn't change the Kates. Nothing we could have done, we had to go through. There was a Kapara we had to go through by going through all the years of Mitzrayim. Ovad Galut, Zeb, this Galut, the Adenu, Le Karevet Kates, we have the ability to bring closer Le Karevet Kates. That's the Achishen, Ali Dei Tzedaka. Umasim tovim through Sadaka and Masim Tovim. The Chavis Chaim is writing that on his commentary on the Haggadah on the chapter of Halach Ma'anya. Pesach Seder is divided into two parts Yitzhak Misraim and Kam Mashiach, which is why there's a kois for Eliyah Navi at the end of the Pesach Seder, which we don't drink. Because when if Eliyah needs to come, pick it up, make a bracha, and drink it. And that's why we allow Leon Navi to come. Elijah the prophet comes to our Pesach Seder. What's he doing over there? He doesn't come to the sukkah. He doesn't visit us Yom Kippur. What's he doing on Pesach? Because it's all about the past redemption and the future redemption. So we're tying together Pesach and Mashiach. We're tying together Pesach and Mashiach. Listen carefully, my friends. Pesach is the paradigm of Mashiach coming. We hope it is. And therefore, the beginning of the Pesach Seder is Mitzrayim. And the latter part, for halfway through, it just changes completely and comes about Eliyahu Navi, opening the door, Shvachamas Halagayim, get rid of the non Jews who want to kill us, right? Move them out of the way. That's Mashiach. Eliyahu Navi, the Kais, the fifth cup. The four cups come for the four redemptions of Mitzrayim. The fifth cup comes for Eliyahu Navi, when Mashiach comes. That's the future Kais. So it all comes together. Oh, how do we open up the Pesach Seder? Halach Mania, what do those words mean? All who are hungry, come and eat. Oh, I've been with Chesed. 
says the, Chafas, says the Chassam Sofa, that's what's happening over here. We are being told that the way to bring Mashiach is through Chesed. You do the Chesed, Mashiach comes. That's the connection. You want to merit redemption? From the beginning, you want to have guests in your home. Guests who can't afford to eat. Guests who have no family to eat. Guests who don't have the, in our day and age, the spiritual knowledge to even know what a Pesach Seder even is. They're the ones, and through our actions with them, we get to bring Mashiach. So, Chesed equals Mashiach. Abba Yisrael in the form of Chesed. And that's what we see from the Pesach Seder, because that's the paradigm. That's what he says. Nothing mysterious. This galut, that's why, whoever's hungry, come and eat. Oh, and how do we finish the Pesach Seder? Doesn't mean on vacation. It means with Mashiach with us. Right? Not staying in the Hilton. You know, I'm sorry. Nice hotel, right? Or the Waldorf. I love that. We're not talking about that. It means with Mashiach, with our families, in Eretz Israel, each of the Korban Pesach. That's what it means, the Shana Babi Yerushalayim. That's what we stick with Shana Babi Yerushalayim at the end of Pesach. Shahari Biyatinu Hadavar, because the matter is in our hands. So that's a repetitive theme again and again and again. It's in our hands to do something about it. And so far we saw Shabbat, we saw Shabbat, and we saw Chesed, proof being Pesach Seder, and we're going to see as well that the opposite of Chesed, the opposite of Chesed, is going to be the thing that's going to prevent Mashiach coming. And the opposite of Chesed is non-Chesed. And what's the greatest non-Chesed, as we'll do next class, is being destructive to people through Lashon Hara. So Lashon Hara, we're going to see what we say could actually be keeping us in Galut. Right? It all fits in. It's one paradigm, just different sides to it. If being good to people brings Mashiach, being bad to people and talking smack about them is going to be the thing that stops Mashiach coming. Let's do, let's do the Chavis time that last piece, pull that together. Sorry, just because it's here right now. We have a few more minutes. Says the Chavis Chaim, Shemot Alashan, and he quotes the Zohar that any synagogue, any Beit Kanishta, Chada, one shul, if there was one synagogue in my youth, Shomrim Midat Shalom, who had real Shalom in it, Mashiach would come. That's what the Chavis says. If there is one synagogue in the entire world, if anyone in Jewish history, Mashiach would come. You know what that means? There isn't a synagogue entire Jewish history, an entire world that has real shalom. Otherwise, Mashiach would come. So by not bringing shalom into our communities, we're the ones who are preventing Mashiach actually revealing himself. Imken, Mashiach, Be'at Mashiach, says the Chavis Chaim, tell you it's dependent upon our actions. The Yadush of Mirat Shalom, and you should know the character trait of shalom, Ein An Yochon Lezakot, is impossible to achieve a merit. Rak Imyen is here in Mitzchila, can only can only come if we're able to eradicate sinat chinam, baseless hatred, because baseless hatred was the reason the temple was destroyed. We said the loshen hara and evil gossip and nasty speech that damages other people, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, physically, whatever is that's loshen hara. That's where everyone has to strengthen themselves to fix up the sins of the time. If you're able to work at it, says the Chavetz Chaim, I guarantee you'll be able to merit the seeing of the basic being that's being built. Because without this temple, it could remain destroyed forever. Heaven forbid. Is that Shabbat, everybody, all the commentators say they've said, said we're not done with Chavetz Chaim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to see a bit more, but that's it. Shabbat, all, because that's what destroyed, that's what rebuilds. Okay, my friends, 